Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and NBs, and thank you for tuning back into St. Andrew TV, a cure for your Monday blues. I am your host, Andrew, and today we are doing Steal His Fit Part 3, Western Edition. I have created an ensemble of some more debonair outfits that you might see on the wild frontier or in one of the more luxurious towns across the West. And after this introduction, I'm going to go piece by piece and tell you what I'm wearing. with the most unoriginal piece here in my outfit, and that would be my hat. You've seen it in all my videos, and it is a four and a half inch telescopic crown with a four inch bounded edge brim. That is what I wear in all my videos. No surprise. It is made out of 10X beaver fur felt, it is a pretty expensive hat. I think this one in particular cost me $300. And this is probably one of the more common wide brim hats that you'd see in the Old West. You've seen this in all the videos, so that's why I said it's the most unoriginal. If you see me out in public, 99% of the time you will see me wearing this hat. Next piece of the ensemble is the shirt. Now this is a classic pullover shirt, which means the buttons don't go all the way down to the bottom of said shirt. However, this one is a little different than some of the pullover shirts you've seen out of the Old West. I'm gonna move my tie over a little bit and you can see the buttons on there. This shirt in particular has button loops instead of the traditional buttons that go through the other piece of the material. They're just like little pieces of material that loop out and then attach to the button as you just saw. You can see that I just took off my coat because I'm gonna to describe to you, along with this normal turn down collar, which you see pretty frequently in the Old West, this is a little different in terms of the sleeves and the shoulder. These are full sleeves. There is a lot of extra material that hangs off the arm, as you can see there. And this shirt also has what we call a drop shoulder or a drop sleeve, which means the fabric actually goes past the natural edge of the shoulder. You can see some seams here and seams here that tell you that it is that type of shirt. So what is accenting the shirt and the rest of the outfit now is the necktie. The tie itself is a more traditional knot you'd see today, but it did originate back in the Victorian era. And the knot you see is actually called a four in hand knot, not four in hand, like somebody from another country, but four in hand. Now this is more of a necktie that you would see in today's world. However, you could use the four in hand knot with different neck pieces that you'd see around the Victorian era, such as cravats and ascots. They could work for both of those and also this one that I'm wearing today. Let's move on to the coat, which is a frock coat. We've discussed frock coats in the previous video. This one just has a different color and the material is different because this material is a little bit more traditional to what you would find during that period. This one is 100% wool, but it's the same design as the previous coat. As you can see here, it has a tail that separates at the backside. It even has the two decorative buttons that don't really do anything. They're just pretty to look at. And another difference about this frock coat opposed to the one that I wore previously is this one's lapel is actually a different color than the rest of the coat itself. This one actually has a black little contrast with the goldish silver kind of tone that the rest of the uh, coat has. So it's a nice little offset and you can match it with other accent pieces such as a black tie and you can't see them right now, but black boots and the black hat. I purposely saved the waistcoat and the trousers to do as one universal 
group here because they are, as you can see, matching. When I bought this, I wanted something that looked, or I guess resembled something that Wild Bill would wear. He's one of my favorite Old West folk heroes. And I figured looking at all the pictures and how he is depicted in cinema, this fit the bill. So I removed my coat once again because I have a fun fact for you about the waistcoat itself. Waistcoats are meant to fit as such. They're supposed to be tight around your midsection and the overcoat is to show the broadness of your shoulders while being tight around your waist showed a nice, condensed, elegant fit around your waist. This is because in the 1820s, a lot of men of high society and even high-ranking military officials wore corsets, believe it or not, and that was the idea. You wanted an elegant, smaller waist and then the overcoat showed how broad your shoulders were. It was actually seen as very masculine to do such. So with most things American style, it has roots in Europe. And the waistcoat is no exception because this was actually something that the British gave us in the 1630s. The one I am wearing is made out of cotton and it is single breasted with a pointed bottom. It is lined with just one big piece of olive green material, but it does stop my shirt from rubbing into the really pretty piece. Now, you can see that this is a waistcoat that you would wear to a more uh, debonair event. This is not a work vest or a work waistcoat. This is something that you wore to impress. You wanted to be seen in this. It is very flamboyant. It catches your eye. And that is something that I wanted to point out because not all waistcoats are the same in terms of their, uh, I guess, functionality. And just a side note before we move on to the matching trousers, never button the last button of a single breasted vest like I'm currently doing right now. So that should actually sit like that. Moving on to the trousers, like I said, these are a matching set, which if you line this up right here, you can see that it's supposed to be one big uniform piece. And you've seen this variation of trousers in my other videos with the burgundy ones, and I even think there's a few more pair that I've worn, but the same applies here. These are fishtail, and I'll even loosen up the cinch belt on my waistcoat here so you can see it but that is a fishtail. They go up with the suspenders. The suspenders are also historically accurate. I've touched on that in previous video. They are just black elastic because I'm wearing black accent pieces. And if you ever did sneak a peek of my suspenders, you'll know that I'm still matching even with something that you don't see. Speaking of things you don't see and you won't see because I don't want to get struck down by YouTube is the fly. It is a button fly you're just gonna have to take my word for it because I'm not gonna open it up and look like a hot dog salesman. Our last item today, and that is the boot portion of this outfit. And these are actually different than the previous boots that I've worn on this type of episode. These are called cavalry cut boots. And you can see because there is a difference between the back of the stem and the front of the stem. The back of the stem measures 18 inches while the front with this little piece of leather sticking up like this is 21 inches. They come with a inch and a half heel and a leather bottom, which is also historically accurate. And if there's any trivia questions about St. Andrew TV, he wears a size 11. Now I'm gonna give you five seconds while I put the boot back on to answer in the comments what this little piece of leather sticking up over the knee is for. Three, two, one. I actually gave you a little more time because I threw my coat back on, but what is the extra little patch of leather meant for that covers your knee? Well, the name suggests it. It's a cavalry cut. It is meant for military personnel and it went over your knee for kneeling down. It didn't get your military uniform dirty and also it protected your knee from any, uh, I suppose, unforeseeable things that could be on the ground, you have no idea. It is a battlefield after all, so who knows what you could find on there, but it was also used for protection. And there you have it. That was Steel His Fit Western Edition Part 3. Uh, this one was probably my most distinguished look out of all of them. I definitely went above and beyond the call of duty, no pun intended with the military type footwear, but 
I would have to say that I probably did a pretty stand-up job with my outfit today. And as always, I would like you guys to rate the fit down in the comment section, given you've gotten this far. Thank you to everyone who has gotten this far into the video. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed today's video, or leave me a comment stating what you liked, or tell me what I should do next. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed as of late, but for those of you who have come across this video or this channel, and you've yet to hit that subscribe button, think about doing so, because you're a daisy if you do.